We're continuing the theme of recent videos where we have trig functions, but the argument isn't a simple angle. We want to express the cosine and sine of a compound angle expression in terms of sine and cosine of the constituent angles. In this video, we'll address the double angle identity, which is how we express the cosine and sine of two theta in terms of the cosine and sine of theta. Here are the angle sum identities from TR-38. Since cosine two theta can be expressed as cosine theta plus theta, we can use the angle sum identities and consider both angles to be theta. Cosine theta plus theta equals cosine theta times cosine theta minus sine theta times sine theta. This is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Sine theta plus theta equals cosine theta times sine theta plus sine theta times cosine theta. Rearranging the right side makes it clear that we have two cosine theta sine theta. You'll see the double angle identity for cosine written a few more ways. It's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta and we can replace cosine squared theta with one minus sine squared theta. This leaves one minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is one minus two sine squared theta. We can also replace sine squared theta with one minus cosine squared theta, which after some rearranging gives us two cosine squared theta minus one. So this is four equations, but only two identities, since these three all say the same thing. Let's try them out. Let's let theta equal pi over three, and use these identities to find the cosine and sine of two theta. Cosine two theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Since theta equals pi over three, we know its cosine is one half, and its sine is square root of three over two. Plugging in these values, we get one-fourth minus three-fourths, which is negative one-half. Sine two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta. Two times square root of three over two times one-half is square root of three over two. These numbers check out because the cosine and sine of two pi over three are indeed negative one-half and positive square root of three over two. For the sake of completeness, let's find cosine two theta using the other versions of the identity. Of course, we expect the same answer, negative one half. One minus two sine squared theta. The sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. Squaring that is three fourths. Two times three fourths is three halves. One minus three halves is negative one half. The last version is two cosine squared theta minus one. Cosine pi over three is one half. Squaring that is one fourth. Two times one fourth is one half. One half minus one is negative one half. Again, whether you need to memorize these depends on your instructor, so check with them. Often, they'll provide a list of common trig identities for you to use on exams. Since this is such a short video, let me take this opportunity to add some of my own editorial opinions. Here are the last several video titles. TR-36 odd and even trig identities are important and fortunately easy to memorize. Negative angles can spring up all the time in engineering problems and it's important to be able to simplify expressions that include trig functions of negative angles. TR-37 extended the reflection concept to all the other axes. These identities aren't encountered as often, but at least they're simple to visualize with some practice. By the time we get to TR-38 and 39, we're entering the realm of identities that were left over from the days before calculators and computers. Remember, the study of trigonometry is thousands of years old. Scientists and engineers of the past may have had access only to partial cosine and sine tables. They would have to add or subtract angles they knew to get angles they needed. So the angle sum and difference identities were used all the time and every student knew them by heart. Today we have calculators and computers and no one needs to construct needed angles from angles they know because you can easily get the trig function values for any angle you need with a calculator. 
TR-40, this video is more of the same, but it's possible to encounter one of these expressions, and it may be helpful to recognize that you can replace it with a double angle. I guess this is also true for the sum and difference identities, but it seems unlikely that this situation will be encountered, and even more unlikely that it will be recognized. I will admit that there's a pleasing progression where new identities are based on prior ones, as shown in this diagram. So to wrap up this video, recognize that the identities were once extremely important, know how to use them if they're provided, or memorize them if required by your instructor, and be grateful that we have technology that obviates their necessity. In the next video, TR-41, we'll cover the half-angle identities.